Good morning, everyone. I'd just like to begin my remarks by congratulating uh, all of our Kennedy players and the tremendous performance they put on over the weekend of the Adams family. It was truly a great performance, a great job uh, done under difficult conditions. We had a weather event on Friday, rescheduled the matinee on Saturday, and the show went on. And congratulations to all of you. Uh, congratulations also to our robotics team. I'm holding the prestigious award they won over the weekend, the Excellence Award, uh, which qualifies them to go on to world competition. Again, another dimension of our school that is really uh, outshining all expectations and doing tremendous work. They show that focus, hard work, and dedication to what they're all about really pays off. So congratulations to our robotics team on your big win this past weekend. And thanks to all of you uh, working together as a school collaboratively during these weather events, uh, keeping ourselves on task by doing our online program is something that really helps us move our curriculum forward. We have no intention of canceling any vacation days, and as long as we stay at, at task and keep with our program, we will enjoy fun and sun when the better weather comes. God bless you, and have a great week. Good morning. Today is Tuesday, March 6th, D-Day. I'm Connor Buckley. And I'm Devin Buckley. And this is Kennedy Live. Now for some school announcements. Commemorative marching shirts are still available for St. Patrick's Day, so get your order into Mr. Bruder. Also, if you're available to march on Sunday in Mayapak, sign up today in front of Mr. Bruder's office in the library. And now, for, now over to this day in history with William. Hello, I'm William Casper, and this is this day in history. In 1475, Michelangelo, the greatest of the Italian Renaissance artists, is born in the small village of Capri. In 1820, President James Monroe signs the Missouri Compromise, also known as the Compromise Bill of 1820, into law. In 1857, the U.S. Supreme Court hands down its decision on Sanford v. Dred Scott, a case that intensified national divisions over the issue of slavery. And in 1986, George, uh, Georgia O'Keeffe, the artist who gained world life fame over Minimalist paintings of the American Southwest dies in Santa Fe at the age of 98. That's all for this day in history. Now back over to the anchors. Thank you, William. And in breaking news, hundreds of thousands of homes and businesses from Virginia to New England remained without power Monday, several days after a major nor'easter struck the East Coast and with another storm bearing down. Residents faced a massive clean Monday following the storm, which was blamed for nine deaths, including two children struck by trees. More than two million homes and businesses were without electricity. The forecast is for eight to 12 inches of snow west of Boston and south into Rhode Island and Connecticut. And for our featured stories, striking teachers in West Virginia delivered yet another message to lawmakers Monday by packing, by packing the state capitol to capacity, the eighth school day of the walkout. The show of support by thousands didn't immediately sway the lawmakers, who failed to agree on a 5% pay raise that would end the strike, forcing districts to cancel school again. The government union leader and the, and the House of Delegates agreed to pay, to pay raise for the teachers among the lowest paid in the nation, but approved a 4% raise, prompting angry union leaders to vow to stay out indefinitely. A passenger on a Chinese flight threw coins into a plane in an apparent attempt to bring about good luck. The 80-year old passenger reportedly made the offering to the China Southern Aircraft's huge engine whilst boarding on Tuesday. She later admitted to police she had thrown the coins as she prayed for safety. Of the nine coins thrown, just one hit its intended target, nonetheless enough to force the evacuation of 150 passengers for several hours. After an investigation, the involved passenger, surnamed Kui, said she threw the coins to pray for safety. In the end, the flight was cleared to continue its journey some five hours later. And now over to Sports with Gibby. Good morning, Kennedy Catholic Sports Nation. I'm Gibby with your sports. In the NBA, the Trailblazers beat the Lakers 108-103. to D. Lil had 39 points. And the per Spurs topped the Grizzlies 100-98. to Tony Parker had 23 points in the win. In the NHL, the Canucks beat the Islanders 4-3 in overtime. And the Senators beat the Stars 3-2. This was an overtime game as well. 
in NCAA basketball, Gonzaga beat the San Fran Dons 88-60. Killian Tilly led Gonzaga with 26 points. And the BYU Cougars beat St. Mary's Gales 85-72. Childs had 33 points for the Cougars. In Var in varsity sports, today the sports schedule is as follows. All boys and girls lacrosse will be after school today from 3 to 5. JV and varsity softball will be 3 to 5 in the gym. JV baseball for boys will be 5 to 7. And track and field will meet on the bridge at 3.15 p.m. Boys lacrosse, we still need someone to film home and away games. Please contact Greg Brand at gbrand at kennedycatholic.org if you are interested. That's all for sports. Now back over to the anchors. Thank you, Gibby. Well, I'm Connor Buckley. And I'm Devin Buckley. And this has been Kennedy Live. Have, Have a, a great, great day. day.